And it's yeah. just a great story of persistence, you know, whether yeah. it's his story or your story. And think about your story. You went through all of this, yeah. and here you are in this perfect moment with Ain't Too Proud. And yeah. you get to shine, and you get to, you get to be somebody that is still living today and having a huge impact. So yeah. what has this whole experience been like for you when you got the part to learning about Otis to where you are now? Yeah, well, the funny thing was I honestly didn't want the part. Really? Yeah. Why? I, I was trying to get out of musical theater. Mm. So you didn't want to be pigeonholed in that? Uh, well, not, not, just not necessarily. Tired I was just tired of mm. musical theater. I, I got had, you. I had a good string of, <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was starting to book like TV shows mm -hmm. and movies. And so I was like, you know, let's like, let's, uh, see, where this goes. let's see where that goes. Yeah. You know, I was at that point, I want to see it was on season two of Difficult People. Right, and that was starting to blow up. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I was like, well, let's just let's and keep it pays going with it. Far better. Yeah, well, that's the other thing too. <laughs> and TV they have money craft services and craft services. <laughs> you know, game changer. Complete game changer. <laughs> craft services is a complete game changer. So I was like, I, you know, I don't necessarily want to go back to musical theater. I, I know how hard it can be. Right. But I, the funny thing was, I was also doing like a two week workshop of another show that's actually on Broadway right now. So I was mm. like, ah, I'll just stick with this one. I don't necessarily have to audition for this. My agent was like, well, I think this role might be the lead. Mm. And you've never done that. Yeah. And I was like, like the lead lead? Yeah. He was like, yeah. I was like, all right. You know, I was like, you twist my arm, let's go in. <laughs> so they sent me the audition material, it's nine pages of monologues mm. and I was like I don't want to do all that that's a lot <laughs> yeah you know uh and so I was like all right you know what I'm gonna do it I'm gonna do it so I go in I meet with uh the producers uh I had worked with uh Des Mackinoff 10 years mm. prior on a uh Alice in Wonderland musical wow. for we they're trying to develop this Alice in Wonderland musical um I had worked with um the choreographer Sergio Trujillo uh, and his uh, co-choreographer Edgar Edgar Godino mm -hmm. uh, on Memphis. Okay, uh, so I knew those guys. Like I I knew them and they, they knew my work. Right, relationships. It all comes exactly. Back to that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't know the book writer uh, Dominique Morisot. Mm -hmm. I had met her in passing, uh, oddly enough, a couple of years on the corner at Williamstown, like Williamstown wow. Theater Festival. Wow. She was there doing a show called, she was doing a reading of a show called Paradise Blue um, that actually ended up being put up at the Signature Theater cool. last year. Wow, that's a small world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I go into this room, uh, I sing Stand By Me, mm. uh, and then I just proceeded to go through <laughs> Nine pages. Nine pages. <laughs> That's a long audition. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so I finished. He's like, "Okay, can we go back?" I was like, "You want to like go oh, back?" <laughs> and uh, but from that moment, I took a meeting uh, with Des after I was um, hired, and he was like, "We knew from that moment uh, you had uh, what we were looking for to portray this guy." Which was what? Uh, a bit of you know this musical is kind of like for my character a memory play mm. right so i'm the last living temptation right right and i get to tell the story That's essentially cool. i'm doing two two shows i have one show straight to the audience and then i go back into the 50s and and then we go chronologically Going through it present day i got you uh so i'm doing two shows and you need to have someone who's can kind of remember with fondness, but also a, 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 a bit of melancholy mm. of, of some of the things that you have gone through. Right. And I think, I, I think honestly, that day I was a bit sad. Yeah. <laughs> I was, was a good day it, for you to audition. It was, yeah. And so I think some of that heart kind of leaked through. I want to say I was actually trying to hide that that day. Mm. And he was like, I saw a bit of sadness and in you. And it just you. poured out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. And he was like, I knew that's what I need for this character. Um, and it's very important for you to actually feel for him as you go through uh, the show. He asks um, questions that, you know, all of us will answer at some point, you know what I mean? So like one of the questions he asks is, are the decisions that you're making as, I'll use myself, like as an sure. artist, like are the choices that you have made to get where you are, was it worth it? Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And so uh, that's a huge question that we ask, that Otis asks the audience. Um, and then he goes through the show. Um, 
he is the founder of the sh of the temptations right and so he goes yeah, he's through the guy I he's mean. the guy he he holds it all together mm -hmm. you know and he his you know his vision is that you know success for this group like that's what he wants and he will do anything that he can that he can to make sure that this group is as, as successful as possible